Shalom, uh, my name is Barry Shaw of the Israel Institute of Strategic Studies, and this is The View from Israel. I will be running a series of interviews with uh, important people based both here in Israel and abroad regarding the International Criminal Court investigations into Israel for war crimes. The ICC investigation is made by a plaintiff that is a terror inciting and terror rewarding organization dressed up as a Palestinian civil administration, which ignores their own ongoing terror crimes against Israel, including rewarding their terrorists in their beta slave program, and also ignoring their political rival in Gaza, Hamas's ongoing terror attacks against Israeli civilians. And speaking as the founder of the Netanya Terror Victims Organization, I find the actions of an international court to target the terror victim by accepting the charges made by the terrorist to be deeply offensive. The ICC charges are threefold. One is that Jews choosing to build their homes in our ancient homeland, particularly in Judea, Samaria and Jerusalem, is a war crime. The second is that holding back Hamas terrorists hiding behind civilians and children while attempting to breach our border fence with Gaza so that they can invade Israel, reach the local villages, and kill and capture any Jewish civilians that they find there, that this is a war crime and not the Palestinian intention to murder Jews. And the third charge, that massive rocket fire by Hamas from Gaza into Israeli civilian areas is ignored, but there are military response to prevent the potential murder of thousands of Israelis is a war crime based on charges brought to the IAC by the terror supporting Palestinian Authority. I've invited a number of uh, guests, professionals involved in legal and military aspects of war and warfare. Uh, and to answer some of the charges made by the ICC prior to their investigation. But before we get there, um, I'd like to present you here with a summary of background to perhaps the main charge emanating out of the IDF action in Gaza in 2014 called Operation Protective Edge. And here's some of the information I think you ought to bear in mind. Prior to July the 8th, 2014, and the start of Operation Protective Edge, 450 rockets were fired into Israel since the beginning of the year. These rockets were capable of reaching Israel's largest cities and population centers, endangering three and a half million Israeli lives. The IDF also discovered a vast underground tunnel network leading from civilian areas in Gaza into Israel itself. The Israeli military intelligence assessed that Hamas possessed approximately 10,000 rockets prior to Operation Potential. One third was fired at Israel during the operation, and an additional one third were destroyed by the IDF forces during the 50 day operation. Most rational observers agree that Israel had no other option but to go into Israel and clean up this dangerous threat. The military campaign had the aim of restoring security to Israeli citizens by dismantling the Hamas tunnel network used by their terrorists to infiltrate into Israel and to destroy also their missile stockpile and their command structure and bases. On July the 18th, the 10th day of the operation, amid continued terrorist assaults on Israel from land, air and sea, the IDF commenced the ground phase of the operation with the aim of locating and destroying the underground tunnel network and going after the rocket arsenals and launchers. IDF forces neutralized 32 terror tunnels during this phase of the operation, 14 of which exited inside Israel. The IDF excavation of tunnels took place during phase two of Operation Protective Veg resulted in the seizure of tons of Hamas supplies, 
as well as the discovery of plans for future attacks against Israel by Hamas, including a massive plot to attack southern Israel on the Jewish New Year in September 2014. Hamas planned to send terrorists through more than 30 terror tunnels uncovered by the Israeli troops and into six southern Israeli communities. The plan was to kill and kidnap as many Israelis as possible. לפני כארבע שעות, בתוך המסגד מצאו שני, שתי, שני פתחי פעילים, אחד חשוד כהגנתי ואחד חשוד כהתקפי. אנחנו נכנסים עכשיו לקומה התחתונה במסגד, זה פתח הפיר הראשי, ההתקפי, שכנראה המסילה שלו מובילה לשטח uh, מדינה. כאן יש פתח פיר שמכוסה על ידי דלת. לפני כארבע שעות בלחימה שהייתה כאן, מחבלים ברחו דרך הפיר ההגנתי הזה, כנראה שפתח היציאה שלו בהמשך השכונה. were fired against Israel by Hamas and other Palestinian terror groups in Gaza during Operation Protective Edge. The IDF targeted more than 5,085 terror sites in the Gaza Strip. All of them were embedded in the civilian population. According to the IDF, 3,659 rockets and mortar launch sites were discovered including rockets that were fired on IDF soldiers in Gaza itself. Of those that struck inside Israel during the campaign, 224 hit built-up areas in Israeli civilian towns. In the three weeks leading up to July the 8th, there were 197 failed launches, projectiles that never left Gaza after being fired by Hamas or didn't launch at all. And it's known that many Palestinians were killed or injured in the Hamas rocket shortfalls within Gaza. Rockets were discovered in three separate incidents at United Nations UNRWA schools, according to an official IDF report. Throughout Operation Protective Edge, Hamas used United Nations facilities, schools, graveyards, mosques and power plants and other civilian areas to launch over 1,600 rockets at Israel. Among these civilian sites was the Wafa Hospital. Hamas used the hospital to not only launch uh, rockets, but used the basement of the hospital as a command center and a personal protection center for their top leaders and terror commanders. The hospital was also used as a rocket launching site. IDS said that Hamas repeatedly opened fire on troops from hospital windows and used anti-tank missiles from the premises. In response to the threat that this posed to IDF forces, the IDF repeatedly conveyed warnings to the hospital staff 
Palestinian officials, the international aid organizations, including the World Health Organization, requested that they act in order to stop the hospital from being used for military purposes by Hamas, and warning that the IDF will be forced to act if these activities continue. Throughout Operation Protective Edge, as in previous IDF campaigns, the IDF made great efforts to minimize harm to civilian populations in the Gaza Strip. The IDF warned civilians prior to IDF strikes. The largest efforts took place on July the 17th, when approximately 100,000 leaflets containing warning messages were dropped over Gaza and hundreds of thousands of civilians received phone messages telling them to vacate their villages. بلاغ عسكري إلى سكان الشاجعية والزيتون بالرغم من مبادرة وقف إطلاق النار حماس والحركات الإرهابية الأخرى استمروا في إطلاقهم النار لهذا سيقوم جيش الدفاع الإسرائيلي بالعمل بقوة وعزم للضرب من الجو العناصر الإرهابية والبنية التحتية التابعة لها في منطقة الشاجعية والزيتون التي تطلق منها الصواريخ باتجاه دولة إسرائيل من أجل سلامتكم عليكم إخلاء بيوتكم حالا وفورا والاتجاه إلى مركز مدينة غزة وهذا حتى الساعة الثامنة صباحا يوم الأربعاء 16/7/2014 العودة ممنوعة إلى هذه المناطق المذكورة إعلاه حتى إشعار آخر جيش الدفاع الإسرائيلي لا يريد المس بكم وبأبناء عائلاتكم الهدف من إخلاء المناطق هو لضمان حياتكم كل من سيخالف هذه التعليمات ولا يخلي بيته على الفور حياته وحياة أبناء عائلته في خطر During the operation IDF also facilitated the provision of medical services through the Civil Liaison Administration, as well as the transfer of medical supplies in the Gaza Strip to Gazans through the land crossings. The IDF even permitted people with medical emergencies to enter Israel in order to receive hospital care. On July the 23rd, after Hamas continued firing rockets from inside a hospital, the IDF made an additional warning call. Audio from the call confirms that the hospital was closed and no medical staff or patients were in the building. <laughs> يعني بقول لي بشير مستشفى الوفا يعني مأكد في إيش حدا غاد من المرضى طب المستشفى الوفا احنا عم نحكي عن السجايد عشان يكون متأكدين انه في إيش غاد مرضى في إيش إيش يعني بس ما في مرضى غاد كيف الحال مدير المستشفى رد عليك مدير المستشفى حكيت معاه حكى لي انه بالنسبه لإله ما في اي طوارئ طبيه موجوده ولا مرضى هو سكر المستشفى وسكر آه. كل المستشفى وما فيش مجال لاي حدا يدخل من المستشفى لانه مغلقه بس انت حكيت يعني مع 
سي قال لك فيش حدا منهم غاد فيش حدا منهم غاد لانه احنا بهمنا نوضح كمان يعني اذا بيكون في يعني عندنا لقواتنا من غاد استهداف وبيكون في نشطاء هن هن يعني هسه موجودين بقلب المستشفى وبيسوي لنا استهداف يعني بتعرف انت حسب يعني عندنا يعني كمان قانون الدول اللي هو بيسمح لنا كمان احنا اه انه احنا بدنا نحافظ على يعني 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 احنا بدنا نحافظ على جنودنا وبدنا نحافظ كمان على ال يعني بتعرف المواطنين مواطنين دولة اسرائيل ما يكونش اطلاق نار من غاد ما يكونش كمان من غاد اطلاق صواريخ After confirming that no civilians were present, IDF entered the compound to arrest the terrorists with their hospital grounds in order to remove the threat posed to IDF forces. The IDF official report clearly explained how Hamas exploits civilian infrastructure, stating that Hamas tactics deliberately violate international law and the most basic moral precepts. Given these tactics, the ultimate responsibility for the damage done to civilians as well as civilian infrastructure of Gaza lies with Hamas. Throughout Operation Protective Edge, Hamas violated 11 ceasefire agreements by firing at Israeli civilians and forces during the ceasefire and the United Nations declared humanitarian windows. Therefore, the vast amount of war crimes lies on the Palestinian side of the equation. But the International Criminal Court are targeting Israel for the war crimes. And I will be holding a series of interviews with people both here in Israel and abroad who were intimately involved in the, in the situation of all the claims being made against us by the International Criminal Court. I'm not going to